One big misconception people seem to have about banned movies is that it includes movies withheld by their owners. Now, big studios censoring a movie is something I'm also opposed to, but it's quite a different beast from the government censoring a movie. Ultimately, if a producer doesn't want a movie released, they could just not make it and we'd never know. Perhaps worth a discussion, but not what I want to talk about today. No, this is not a story of a producer not releasing a film. This is a story of a producer who tricked the government into banning his own film. That film is Blood Feast. Blood Feast is a pretty short film, it's a little over an hour, and I could probably talk the entire runtime of the film about the film, its influence, and its creator, Herschel Gordon Lewis. But let's keep it short. Lewis and his business partner, David F. Friedman, were advertising executives who had decided to try their hand at independent filmmaking. For a while, they were making nudie movies, which were films set in nudist colonies, since that was the only way to get nudity past the MPAA, still under the Hayes Code at the time. But as they relaxed rules about nudity, Lewis and Friedman needed to find something else that the big studios weren't doing. Their solution? Gore. Thus, Lewis wrote and directed and Friedman produced Blood Feast, the original splatter flick. By today's standards, it's pretty goofy. I mean, on top of the usual B-movie acting and production value, the blood is clearly just red paint. But this was far beyond anything that existed in the 60s. And boy, did it draw a crowd. Now, Lewis and Friedman were pretty brilliant businessmen and had more than a few tricks to exaggerate the controversy of Blood Feast. This is, by my research, the first film to provide vomit bags to viewers as rumors spread of people throwing up in the bushes at drive-in screenings. Rumors I kinda doubt, but ones that existed nonetheless. A somewhat common tactic early horror and exploitation directors had come up with to sell movies was to hire fake protesters to picket their movie. But Friedman took it a step further, if not a step too far. Friedman filed an injunction against the film in Sarasota, Florida, claiming it broke local obscenity laws, drawing more attention to this film so controversial people want it banned. Here's the problem. The injunction worked, and they had to pull the film from Sarasota while Lewis and Friedman fought the ban in court. Of course, ultimately the film would get some genuine bans, it is one of the oldest films to appear on the Video Nasties list. But it remains, at least as far as I can tell, the only film a producer accidentally got banned. Until tomorrow, happy Banned Films Week.